This video is all about the pros and the cons of living in the state of Connecticut. My name is Kanisha Tong, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure you do so, so you won't miss any of the videos I have about living in Connecticut and all of the vlogs and the tours that I will be having, so you will see what it's like real life outside, not just pictures you see in a book that were edited to look beautiful, but what it's really like to live in this state. Things that others may have seen and heard, and this is just my perspective as a realtor in this state who grew up in New York City and travels back and forth quite often. So one of the pros for me is the location. Connecticut is really nice. It's in the middle of Boston and New York and Rhode Island. So I'm located in Hamden right now. My office is in Stamford. I have offices all along the coastline. And starting in Hamden, I can go up to Hartford or go up to Springfield, Massachusetts. I can go further down to Stamford and then I can go up to, you know, Ocean Beach Park, one of my favorite places, or the casinos. So it's pretty nice that it's in the middle of everything and it's kind of easy to get to everything. And our airport is small but efficient. So when my family flies in, they like that it doesn't take forever to get through security and we do have international flights. So the location is definitely a pro. Another thing that I love about Connecticut is all the lifestyles are accommodating. So you just have to let your realtor know wh what your lifestyle is like. It's not just a house, right? You have to make sure that you pick an area that matches what you want. So when I first moved here, I had little children and I wanted parks and I wanted sidewalks so they could ride their bike and I wanted the fenced in backyard. But I have adult kids now and I have a whole different thing. Now I want areas for my two puppies. I'm obsessed with my dogs. I want areas for my puppies and I want like a townhouse because I don't want to deal with the maintenance or I want like a two, like your needs change. So if you just let us know what kind of lifestyle, Connecticut has everything. We have lake life. We have the shoreline. We actually have 332 miles of scenic shoreline. We have 83 beaches, private, public, state. Like um, we have uh, mountains. Um, do you like to hike? We have 2,000 miles of it. We have cities, super urban, you know, nice cities. We have suburbs, and even those suburbs have different, you know, personalities and characteristics. And Forbes has actually reported that Connecticut has the sixth best quality of life in the U.S. So all the lifestyles are accommodated and you will find a place that you would want to live somewhere. It's just a matter of knowing where to go. So another pro is it's not too big. You can drive from one side of the state to the other in four hours or less. And, you know, we have enough counties and the counties all have a nice city in them and they all have really nice suburbs. So the size of Connecticut to me is a bonus because I do like to drive and I like to travel a lot. And so I feel like it's the perfect size state. Another great thing about this state is the outdoor life. So USA Today reported that Connecticut is the fourth healthiest state in the nation and we have 63 national landmarks. But honestly, there's just so many parks and there's just so many beautiful places. And if you're into outdoor life, you will love it here. Um, most of the things that are outdoors are free or affordable. And it's just a really nice place to be. And coming from a city where everything was like all tight and congested, and I love the New York City life and everything, but at the end of the week, I just want to go home to my own space and have my own backyard and have my own couch and outside and throw up the projector and just watch outdoor movies. You know what I mean? Like, so I like that the outdoor life is there. The outdoor life is so prominent that I accidentally became a triathlete. So I didn't even go to gym class in high school. And somehow I ended up working with team and training to raise money for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. And now I'm in a wetsuit, jumping in the Long Island Sound every Wednesday with my teammates in my, you know, learning how to swim and do triathlons. And I'd never probably have experienced that if I had lived in New York City, because it's like Connecticut is super outdoor friendly. So you are able to enjoy, maybe for the first time if you move here, you know, all of the elements in the outdoor life and, and just really enjoy being outside. So a pro I would have to say is the weather. If you really like all four seasons and maybe eight, 
then you want to move to this state because we have winter and then fake spring and then winter again and then we have spring and then we have summer and then we have like deathly Hades Valley summer and then we have fall and then we have second fall where we're like are we gonna have winter so yeah you're gonna get all four seasons you are going to get all four seasons and depending on how much of the season you want that is the benefit and the beauty of the state if you don't want that much snow and you really kind of you know want to be close to the city then fairfield county is awesome for that weather but if you want to be in a lot of snow you might try tolan or win him or new london like it kind of depends so weather wise you if you have a strong preference for what kind of weather you want and what kind of season you want to experience the most then there is a part of the state for you so now i'm going to go into my cons right the first con that i absolutely have to say is a con is the weather i know i just said it was a pro but the weather here could be like extreme i remember i had an indication after i moved here how extreme the weather was because something happened i went this can't be right and then i typed in extreme weather in my town and realized that when the realtor when i first moved here said hampton is known for its wind that he, i didn't understand that that meant we get tornadoes yes we get tornadoes in hampton um there's for some reason the way the wind patterns work there's like kind of a path that tornadoes will pop up in certain towns in connecticut um every couple of years and i don't associate tornadoes with connecticut you know kansas maybe but tornadoes and not like a little tornado like we had a tornado that wiped out hamden middle school and we have a whole brand new one rebuilt so the weather could be a con because it's extreme it will be like four degrees and i like the winter but not like that much so if you want like steady nice calm weather where it doesn't really dip under 30 and it doesn't really go over 70 then you should not move to connecticut because not only are you not going to get steady weather but we get different temps the whole week just the whole week just you know summer on monday and fall on tuesday and maybe winter when like you, the, the con can be the weather it can definitely be a, a con for some people but if you like all four seasons then by all means so traveling um again drove to new york for seven years um after i moved here and then i started working in greenwich so still driving from hamden it's pretty far um for some people not for me and the reason why it wasn't too bad is because i was going from west to east and east to west like if you look on the map and you know what in connecticut that's cool that's fine that's easy I-95, I-84, Route 15, pretty easy to navigate, right? Yeah, uh, try going from the top of the state to the bottom. Yeah, not so easy. So if you have to travel and you have to go from the top to the bottom, there's like no one big highway. So you end up on these routes and you end up on these routes that sometimes are just one lane and the world's slowest person is in front of you and then I get annoyed. So it's like, if you're trying to travel from north to south um, and you're thinking of moving here, you kinda, I always tell people, well, where are you gonna work? Before we even pick the home that you wanna look at, like, where is your commute? Where do you wanna work? What kind of commute do you want? Because that travel time can throw you. So I can easily go from Hamden to Stanford, which is down to the shoreline and across, and that is 45 miles and I can do, you know, average is 45 minutes with no traffic, right? Mile a minute. If I want to go from Hamden to Danbury, which is actually 38 miles, so that's less, Hamden to Danbury, because it's through the routes and it's not straight, it's all these little towns and turns and stopping, it takes an hour, which is insane. Because that's just crazy to me. I'm looking at the map and I'm like, it's not even that far, but it's actually far and it's not even like it's Yes, it's all scenic because Connecticut is very nice, but not when I'm trying to hurry up and get somewhere. So traveling from north to south, up and down in the state is a con, absolutely. If you have to do that on a regular basis, you need to know that and be prepared. So Connecticut has another huge con for me. And even though Wallet Hub said that we are ranked third for in the country for pu the public school education, I personally feel that there's just not enough free things for kids at the schools. So in New York City, yes, I'm a New Yorker, and even though I live in Connecticut, I will say it over and over again, it's a thing New Yorkers do here, I'm not sure why. But in New York City, if you don't have money 
and you know you can still grow up cultured your your school is going to get a free pass for the bus and the train and you're going to go to the opera and broadway shows and science things and all of that's going to be included because in new york city and manhattan all that's included yeah not in connecticut so they have to get a bus a rent a school bus and that costs money and so when i would go to the school the teachers were like well we don't want to pass that cost along to the parents and so we just don't go on that many trips. And then even if you find a way to get there for free, you can't get in for free because for some reason schools still have to pay. And then if they do have a free day, it's like this weird one hour at a time, nobody would go. So I personally feel like that's a con. Like I love the schools in Connecticut. I love that they teach swimming, most of them, and they have pools and tennis and crew and lacrosse and you know sailboat i love it all but i really feel like regardless of the county and the town and the city you live in that there should be more free things for student trips that's just a con for me i would just take my kids to the city all the time museum of natural history the moma you know like the met like i would just take them so for me i feel like there's just not enough free cultural activities for school trips it's different when you go with your class than when you go with your parents it's a whole different experience now i have noticed that if you go to certain libraries for your town or your city they tend to have passes in the libraries and you can borrow the passes and then go for free and you have to check them out and then bring them back in so there is one little loop around that would be there so obviously if anybody is going to talk about a con in connecticut they're going to talk about the cost of living Technically, technically, we are 14 to 48 percent less expensive than New York City and Boston, but it doesn't feel like that if you live here. Gas can be anywhere from 290 to almost five dollars, depending on where you are and the weather. Right. So, if it is the day of or before snowstorm, the gas prices are going to be closer to four to five dollars, and it is what it is. Um, so. The cost of living can be pretty high. Um, another con is absolutely cell phone coverage. I don't understand why in 2022 cell phone coverage isn't everywhere. Even in certain towns, it will be this carrier is better for this section and this carrier is better for that section. Um, the cell phone coverage and the internet is not consistent in the state. So when I have helped people move, um, one of them was a video editor and he told me, I use this kind, I need this. He said he needed Xfinity high speed. So when we looked for homes, because that is really what he did for his job, I only showed him homes that had Xfinity high speed available because he couldn't maintain work if he didn't have Xfinity high speed. So it's like the internet and the cell phone coverage is really spotty in certain areas. And so there will be coverage, but it's a matter of who is your carrier and do you care if you switch? So that to me is a con. I feel like everything's wide open. Throw up a thing. Like, I don't understand why we still have spotty cell phone coverage. It doesn't make any sense to me. And of course, the car tax. My number one pet peeve, I really cannot stand the car tax in Connecticut. So we have a car tax. We don't have tolls and the roads are nice. And they are nice. You know how, you know, the roads are nice. They're always working on them all the time at the most inconvenient times. So if it's not snow or you know pouring rain or crazy wind there will be some kind of construction on the highway so the car tax to me i see where the work is going and i see that they're spending the money on the roads but it's like you always pay the car tax it doesn't go away and that is a super high con for me people say taxes in general but that car tax gets me every time so i talked about all of the things that are the pros and cons living in connecticut I mean, we have so many other things, but I wanted to talk to you about real life things. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you will not miss out when I go out there and I start vlogging and showing you winter, spring, summer, and fall. So you can really see what it's like in every single county and what it's like in the cities and the top three top, you know, like suburbs around all of our major cities.